good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're listening. Uh, my name is Kyle Dunbar, and I'm here to talk to you about Authentic Voices, which is a project that I set up a few years back. And I really don't want to say too much before I start, because I want my sp students to speak for themselves. So I hope you'll enjoy this first poem. I used to be big and fat, now I'm skinny and tall, and love basketball. I used to be mean and green, now I'm nice as a queen. I used to fight all the time, now I talk out all the time. Never wanted to talk to nobody, now I talk to everybody. I used to think of life as, life isn't for everybody. Now I think of life as, life is for everybody. I will grow and grow, until I reach my goal. Now as I'm coming up at like the sun, my journey has just begun. I hope you enjoy listening to that as much as I do every time. I'm so proud of the student and proud that we have a place where she can share her beautiful poetry and her voice reading it. Um, to give you some quick background, my name is Kyle Dunbar. I'm a technology integration specialist in Northern Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C., and I have the awesome job of getting to work with teachers to use more technology in their classrooms. Uh, one of my passions is literacy and authentic literacy, and so a number of teachers and I got together and read the book, The Digital Writing Workshop by Troy Hex, and we were really inspired by the points he makes in this book about how to take the writing process and, do, and go digital with it and incorporate all of those important and digital literacy skills. Uh, we joined his Ning and participated there and brainstormed ideas and talked a lot about what we wanted to do. In addition to that inspiration, um, I also credit Teachers Teaching Teachers, um, a weekly podcast that I subscribe to that I love listening to that um, talks a lot about a really powerful place called Youth Voices, another website where students can upload their work to the world, get comments, get feedback, and um, I became quite a lurker on Youth Voices and um, was really interested in this. Um, the teachers I worked with were much more comfortable with a site that I kind of managed and controlled. So we went ahead and set up our own wiki space and called it Authentic Voices. Um, the number of reasons why we went with Wikispaces. One was that it was free, um, and so we really wanted something that we knew we could maintain. Second, you can create student accounts without student email addresses, which was really important to us. We have a number of students that didn't have email or didn't have school appropriate email, and so we wanted that feature. Um, I also thought that Authentic Voices would work well with the idea of bringing in audio and um, the students work. And to that end, that's worked out really well. Um, it's been really easy for the students to get used to entering their work and really easy for them to upload their audio files. Speaking of audio files, um, we use the free download um, Audacity as how we had at is the manner which students recorded themselves. Audacity, if you don't already know it, is a free program that um, let, allows you to record your voice, have multiple tracks going, and do lots of editing. And if you first look at it, sometimes the interface is intimidating, but I found that the students very quickly found the record and the playback and the stop buttons and got comfortable with having different tracks and deleting them and starting them where they needed to. And you can export these files as WAV or MP3, so it worked great for us. I want to stop and tell the story of the first student who actually um, put something up on Wikispaces. The teacher sent them to me and he said, oh, I think um, DeAndre is ready to record today. So I told him about the project and he was pretty excited and um, he got some headphones on and he started to read his poem to record it. And he stopped and he looked at me and he said, can I change the poem? And I said, yeah. And he went back and he changed a few things that he realized didn't sound right once he started reading. So then he, then he recorded again, still found some stuff that didn't quite say the things the way he wanted to, went back and revised again. And if you're an English language arts teacher out there listening, I know that you, you know the value of this, that it's so hard to get students to revise. And in this case, where he was listening to his own voice and he knew that it was something that was going to be published, he really got into the revision in a way that he hadn't previously. Um, so this led to our first aha with this, pro with this project, which is that revising, uh, recording leads to revising. And um, we saw it time and time again with a student that, you know, said a piece was done, but then when it came time to actually revi uh, 
record it and publish it, started to go back and um, make more corrections and seemed to really revise in a more authentic way. So if you're thinking of doing any kind of project where the students are working on a piece and they um, you want them to do more revision, I really encourage you to think about ways to have them record themselves and play it back, whether it's on their cell phones, it's using Audacity, something that feels authentic to them besides just reading it quietly to themselves. So I want you to hear um, DeAndre's piece, and so uh, here he is. My name, my name, my name means a lot of things. It means that I'm determined, outgoing, and respectful. I'm not named after anyone, but I think my name is really special. My name is like the number 27, which is my favorite number. My name is like a bright and cheerful color of green. My name is DeAndre, and I'm proud to have that name. If I were to change it, it would probably be epic. That name fits me perfect. It tells people I'm extreme, daring, determined, and larger than life, and I happen to like that name. Even with my real name, I am all those things. I am DeAndre Hamilton, and I feel larger than life. Epic. So, I think you'll agree that all his revisions were worth it. I've been lucky enough in this project to work with a fabulous English language arts teacher, and most of the writing credit absolutely goes to her. This next piece was an assignment where she had them create a metaphor, and um, this girl really was having a tough time with her life at this point, and I love that she could get that out through this metaphor. Go back and read it on the website. There's also a few essays there. Um, this is a personal narrative by a student who had his first run in with the law. Very powerful to read and to listen to uh, his voice as he reads it. We were able to do a few digital stories, too. We had some middle schoolers post their digital stories up on um, authentic voices, and it was great that the kids could see their work published and watch each other's and uh, give each other feedback. In general, the students love the project. They're really excited to be, post their work on authentic voices. A few occasionally are pretty shy or hesitant, and um, we make sure they get a private place to record. Um, many students write down the website, they want to share it with friends or family, they post it on their own Facebook, or um, sometimes their parents post it. In fact, I had one student who was really struggling with her mom at that point in her life, but when she shared the poem with her mom, her mom was thrilled and posted it on her Facebook, and sure enough, the next day we'd had 50 fresh hits, um, mostly from this proud mama. This next piece is written by a student who said to me he'd never thought of himself as an author before this. My life has been an apple. My skin protects me from harm. My external hides my internal. When I was born, when I was born, I was a growing seed. The roads I've taken have leafy paths, not thorny but smooth. The core is my heart, my God, my unchanged identity. Amar. I just love that piece. Um, that student's an English language learner, and so I love that he had a chance to practice his uh, spoken word as well as his written word with this project. We've had hits on the website from all over the world, which is really exciting. We've gotten 48 states. I haven't figured out which two are missing yet, um, and from countries around the world. Um, so it's been great for students to see that. It really empowers them and allows themselves to see themselves as authors. I tweet all the time when students have posted new work and try to get more hits from them, but I'm especially looking for a collaborating classroom, someone that will also enroll their students in the wiki and will post their um, students' work. So one place I've reached out for that is through the Global Classroom Project that Michael Graffin and Deb Frazier established um, last year. So I got to be a part of their founding document and their manifesto and really looking for many ways to connect classrooms around the world, but really hoping that um, authentic voices could find a collaborating school this way. We had lots of false starts, lots of people that replied and um, said they were interested and were checking out the page and joined the wiki as a teacher. Um, but as of yet, we haven't had any hits on the project excel itself, which is to really have students writing on common themes, whether it's family or change or um, you know some of the other pieces that you've seen us write about already, just names, you know, sharing about different names. I did have a friend who was teaching an adult ESL class, and so as a class they logged on and read some of the pieces and composed a response together. Um, so you can see here uh, what uh, one of the classrooms wrote back about one of the poems about a kid's birthday party. 
Um, more excitingly was that at one point, finally, a school in New York, um, I set up accounts for their students, and they got on one day, and they started re replying to our students' work. And it was so exciting. I was getting flooded with emails from Wikispaces that someone had updated. Um, and this is a really a moving exchange between um, the girl who wrote the poem I played at the very beginning, Changes, and a student in New York, where she really talks about how she connects with the message of the poem, that she's been through changes and she's made some bad choices. And um, our student wrote back and, and shared some more advice for her. Um, so I just this experience has really shown us that Authentic audiences help writers bloom. In an effort to recreate more of the magic that happened with that New York classroom, I decided that one thing I could do is be more specific in one theme that other classrooms could write about and could contribute to authentic voices. So the English language arts teacher and I decided that family was a great topic that all teens around the world can relate to. She had her students write essays about family interdependence, and then we recorded those and posted those on authentic voices. And the hope was that being more specific and being really targeted in a date and all of the rest of that, that we would get some classrooms out there that would also want to write about family interdependence or other themes about family. And so we posted our work, and here's one that you can listen to yourself. Families depend on each other a lot. They show each other how to handle problems, and they support each other when help is needed. They show each other how to set goals, and they care for one another. One time my family depended on me was when my stepmother went to the doctor and asked me to take care of the kids that she babysat. The day before I babysat, my stepmother asked me if I wanted to and if I had time. I said yes. The next morning, I went to her house and waited for all the kids to get there. My stepmother's appointment wasn't until 10 a.m., so as I took the elementary kids to wait for the school bus, my stepmother stayed inside with the younger kids that do not go to school yet. So um, we put our thoughts out there, and we waited, and we waited, and we waited. And no other classrooms did end up participating in that project. And so that was another challenge that um, I met and I'm trying to work on. So as I move forward, I'm continuing to think about how to be specific um, so that people get right away what the project's about and they know how to participate, and that I'm clear with the teacher about what they need to do on their end and maybe what support they might need. I think we'll also move to a blog format instead of the wiki spaces. I think people are more familiar with it. They get how to comment and so forth. But I'll definitely keep trying and keep experimenting with teachers so that the student voices can be here or heard. A couple of other projects that I'd like to mention that are out there that I think are really worth checking out. Um, one is quad blogging. It's quadblogging.net. And you can also follow at Deputy Mitchell um, if you want to know more. But basically, four classrooms pair, sort of partner up, and take turns responding to each other's blogs. This is a great way to have a built in audience where you know that your kid's work is going to get read and your kids get the experience of reading work from another classroom. Similarly, um, the Writers Club has started up, which is um, a lot like Youth Voices and what we were trying to get uh, accomplished with Authentic Voices. You can see there that they've got participation from around the world with different classrooms um, contributing and sharing their writing. So I think that's a really exciting project, and I'm hoping I can get some teachers involved with that this year. On our, um, in my school division where I work, they um, did purchase EduBlogs this year for teachers, so that's been great. Um, I've worked with a couple of teachers already that have set up those blogs and are getting their students writing out there. Uh, here's one example, and she and another English language arts teacher are partnering, so they know their kids at least will have the other classrooms that are responding. I have another teacher that I'm working with that is hoping to do some podcasting, so I'm excited that she'll have that audio piece on her blog as well. Um, until then, uh, I will keep presenting and keep sharing and collaborating, getting more ideas from people. Um, I just really believe that when students have a chance to publish to the world and to record themselves, the writing transforms and it stops becoming an exercise that they're turning into the teacher or is going to end up in the wastebasket in a few years, but instead is something that they're contributing to the um, the, the wider work that's out there, or as Alan November would say, the learning legacy. So I 
hope this listening to this gave you some ideas about how you might want to get your student voices out there. I think um, it's so valuable to have that recorded piece, and I hope this got you excited about thinking about that and not just having kids um, put text out there. And I would really encourage you, if you haven't already, the, the world is so flat now. You know, just jump on Twitter and, and find partners. Global Classroom Project's a great way to um, meet up with other teachers and just even launch your own projects through there. And I'm also really open to feedback and ideas, so I'd love if you um, connected with me through Twitter or through the through my little baby blog that I've, I've started, um, or through Authentic Voices, because I'd love more ideas about how you might want to collaborate or um, how you think those two sites can be improved. Thank you so much for letting me participate in K-12 Online Conference this year. It's been such an honor, and I love being here.